Hello everyone! I turned this into this. Ever since watching Mrs.'s turn a fantasy dungeon crawler art pack into an FPS, I've always wanted to give it a try myself. I also have been trying to write all my return to sender code in such a way that I can turn it into an FPS template which I can either use myself for future projects or release for public use. Uh, or both, I guess. Also both. So, this felt like a perfect time to test my code, expand on it, and finally turn an art pack that was never meant to be a first-person shooter into a first-person shooter. I looked for a science fiction art pack and found this one on itch. It looks like it was made for RPG Maker, so it fit my little challenge perfectly. Before we dive in, you know the deal. Please sacrifice your likes and subscribes to the almighty algorithm so that this channel can live and grow. If you've been here a while, then you'll have a good idea of what's already gone into the Return to Sender codebase. If not, I recommend you at least watch Making a Wolfenstein 3D Style FPS in Godot, because that'll form the majority of what we're working with today, considering I'm ripping out all the multiplayer code and everything that makes Return to Sender unique. Looking through the pack, I found these four-sided character sprites with walk cycles, so decided they'll be the bad guys. Problem 1. These sprites only have a walk cycle. Enemies need to attack, die, and take damage. So I had to come up with a way of showing this without modifying the sprites directly. I decided to make them flash red before and during an attack, to let the player know something bad is about to happen. I also made them flash black when they take damage. For the death animation, I simply squashed down the sprite and painted it black. Obviously, actual attack, pain, and death animations would look much better, but this seemed to work quite nicely. I then went through the art pack to find tile sets and pick the parts that will make up the walls, floors, and ceilings, as well as the props that'll be placed around the map. Looking at the sprite sheet, I decided the first level was going to be a forest, ending at a large fortress which will be the second level. I wanted the player to be able to see the fortress but be blocked from going directly to it, so they'd have to make their way through a winding path, fighting enemies along the way, until they got to the front door. Problem 2! Enemies react to gunshots, based on proximity. If the level is constantly winding in on itself, it means every gunshot is going to alert enemies who are physically close to the player, but much further down the path. So every gunshot is going to alert half the level. The solution to this actually came to me while watching Civi 11 play Wolfenstein 3D, where he details the fact that enemies will hear your gunshots unless they are flagged as an ambush, in which case they will wait and only engage the player when they see them or get shot. So, I just implemented an ambush flag. Enemies in big rooms, who I want to be alerted, have it set to false, but any enemies waiting along the path who I don't want traversing the entire level to get to the player have it set to true. Guns in Return to Sender need to be reloaded, but otherwise have unlimited ammo. This won't work for this sort of game, so I added a new variable for backup ammo, and made it so reloads will subtract ammo from the backup, and the player won't be able to reload if there isn't any backup ammo. I also created ammo pickups to spread around the level. I also didn't want the player buying health and weapons from shops attached to the wall, so I removed the credits from the HUD, and created health and weapon pickups. I couldn't find any decent sprites to use for health packs, so all health is just various foods. I populated the level with a few enemy encounters, added health and ammo at various points, placed a load of trees and bushes for props, and boom! Level 1 complete! Before moving on to level 2, I didn't want to use any of Return to Sender's sound effects, so I recorded new voices for the android baddies and applied some filters and audacity to make them sound robotic. Target sighted! I used SFXR to make laser gunshot sounds, putting them in audacity to layer them and apply some more filters. I did, however, leave the meatball sound effects in because they didn't feel out of place for the lizardmen. So, level 2, this was going to be the interior of the fortress, where the player would make their way to some research labs, kill a bunch of evil scientists and escape. Problem 3! Loading into the next level would completely reset the player, meaning they always went into level 2 at full health, with only the starting pistol and very little ammo. I needed a way to preserve the player between levels. The game manager was already an auto-loaded scene, which means it persisted between scene changes. Not just it, but all its children too. So I created a new function that would reparent the player to the game manager before loading the next level. And instead of placing the player in a level directly, I created a player spawn point that the game manager would look for, 
and place the player in, then reparent the player to the new level. Problem 4! Level 1 was a very simple linear jog from one point to another, with no optional paths and no complexity. Doing that again would be boring, so I needed to give the player more of a reason to explore, and a way to make the level feel more dynamic. The solution was to create an event system where I created a singleton script that would emit a signal every time an event happened. And various things around the level would connect to that signal, waiting for specific messages before they activated. I created areas that would tell the event manager to emit a signal when the player walked into them. These areas could also wait for the player to hit the use key, rather than trigger the moment they made contact. So, with this system I created doors that listened for a specific trigger word, and would open or close when they received it. For some doors, I placed a trigger area around the door itself and made it call Open Door when the player hits Use. And for other doors, I placed a trigger area elsewhere, like near a console, which also listened for the same trigger word. So, it looks like the player activated the console itself. I made sure to have different colored doors to indicate if they could be opened directly or if the player needed to open them elsewhere. I also made it so enemy spawn points could listen out for an event and spawn enemies when they received the right trigger word. This meant I could make the player backtrack a little bit and still have enemies to fight, as well as set up more interesting ambushes. Finally, I made it so enemies can call an event on death, which will be useful for ending the level or perhaps locking a player into a room until they clear out the enemies. With these new tools, I created the second level on a sort of encounter-by-encounter -encounter basis. I created this room with a locked door and two red lights next to it. There were two side paths, each with a console that would turn a light green and open the door when both are pressed. Simply walking from one console to the next was a little boring, so I made it so each console spawned in new enemies. For the next room, I wanted to give the player some options. So I created three doors. The first door is locked and marked Research. This is where the final objective will be, but the player will need to find the right console to unlock it. The second one is marked Storage, and is where the player needs to go to find the console. The third door is marked Armory. It is entirely optional, but I figured any FPS player would assume an armory would have a new weapon, and couldn't resist the temptation. The armory took the form of a long hallway with a bunch of smaller rooms, all containing ammo or health, and at the end of the hallway, a shiny new gun. Now I assume any seasoned FPS player is going to see that gun and expect an ambush, and I wouldn't want to disappoint them, so the moment they walk into that room, a bunch of enemies spawn in behind them, giving them the perfect opportunity to test out their brand new shotgun. I designed the rest of the level like this and decided I'll end the game here. Two levels might seem too short, and I did have plans to explore more of the facility, but this was always going to be a small side project slash proof of concept, so I feel like it showcases what it needs to showcase. Reflection! I'm very happy with the result. I set out to turn this heart pack into an FPS, and that's what I've done. I also proved that Return to Sender's codebase was a good starting point for another shooter. And, in doing so, I added to the toolset. The event system in particular is going to be very useful going forward. I'm not sure I'll be able to use it in Return to Sender itself, but it'll be integral to more single-player games. But the toolset is far from complete. The game does not have any form of saving or checkpoints. It's so short that I didn't think it mattered, but going forward I absolutely need to save the player's progress and not force a complete game restart when they die. If you've got a few minutes to kill, the game is available on itch and completely free. I haven't bothered enabling optional payments on this one because it's that short and I don't want anyone feeling shortchanged. But, if you are feeling particularly generous, feel free to check out my other games, which are also free on itch, but have optional payments enabled. Also, please check out and wishlist Return to Sender on Steam. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Buh bye bye